Hey guys, before we get into the devlog, I just wanted to give you guys a quick little update here. I will not be in town uh, the devlog after this, and because I won't have access to my computer for video editing, I decided that the next devlog could be an AMA style devlog. Uh, AMA standing for Ask Me Anything. So if you have any questions that you'd like to ask to a dude who's trying to make his own MMO, uh, head over to the Discord and leave your question in the AMA channel there, or leave a comment down below, and I'll try and answer them all in the next devlog. Anyway, on to the devlog. <laughs> Hello everyone and welcome back to Noia Dev, the series that aims to prove that one developer can create a successful MMORPG. My name is Dane and this week on Noia Dev, we're talking about some quality of life changes. First, let's talk about the font changes or the reason that you clicked on the thumbnail to this video. It's actually the ability for you guys to change the font in the game. This feature has been requested a few times now, and I promise I wasn't ignoring you if you were one of the couple of people who had requested it. I fully understand that the font in Noia doesn't read well for some of you, or that there are some out there who just can't read it due to a multitude of accessibility reasons. I just hadn't changed anything till now because, well, I didn't know how to implement it. Seriously, Google around for the ability to change font dynamically in a game and you will get a whole bunch of Unity forum threads and none of them have a solution. So I had to come up with my own solution to the problem. My solution doesn't exactly work like I wish it could, but it does work. Long story short, I have a tiny script that is attached to every single text object I want to be able to update on the fly. When a text block with this script attached to it activates, the script checks to see if the font matches the font specified in the preferences menu, and if not, update that font accordingly. And this is the part I'm actually really proud of. The preferences menu uses some rich text tag wizardry to make it so each font is displayed as its respective font. When a new font is selected, it quickly triggers all those tiny little scripts from before, and they all update every single text object at once. Bing, bang, boom! Look at that! Woo! I wish I didn't need all all those tiny little updater scripts. That's why I said it doesn't exactly work the way I wish it could but the result is exactly what I wanted. Select a font and everything changes instantly, so I guess I can't complain. Right now, the font preferences will update all the NPC dialogue, quest dialogue, the stat window, and any tooltips that can pop up. As for fonts available, we have a few various different pixel fonts, as well as a few sans serif fonts. I'm no expert on fonts, so if I am missing a font type that should be considered for accessibility purposes, leave a comment down below and I'll see about getting it into the game. I don't want anyone to feel left out or unable to play Noia because of a font. Moving on, let's talk about some skill updates. I don't say this very often, but past Dane came in clutch here. I thought I was going to have to spend a day or two coding the ability for spells to affect player groups, but when I opened up the file for buff skills, there was a note from past Dane and the capability for group spells had already been created months ago. So I guess, I guess past Dane is an okay guy for now. With this, the staff class now has a group heal ability and the B staff called the Nectar staff has an HP regen buff. This will help keep player parties HP topped up during more difficult fights. And speaking of the B weapons, I have gotten around to giving them all weapon abilities. The sword, called the Aperian, I don't know how to pronounce this word. Aperian Avenger has a channeled multi-stab attack don't pay attention to the part here where it's only doing one damage. I need to fix that. The bow, aka the Pollen Storm bow, has a gust attack with a fairly wide range. This will help players kite monsters around by keeping them at a distance. And the wand, the Buzzing Baton, comes with a bee swarm damage over time spell. The recipe book for these, <clears throat> excuse me, the recipe book <laughs> used to craft these weapons can be found in the bee chest 
found randomly throughout the hive. Each weapon will require an iron weapon to start with and some honeycomb. Honeycomb can also be found in the chests and also looted from the hive bosses. This means that players can actually upgrade their iron weapons to bee weapons without ever defeating a hive boss, but it'll go a lot faster if you do. And speaking of weapons, all weapons have had their stats adjusted, mostly for the better. Remember our friend, the balance sheet, this guy? Yeah, I went back and made sure that all weapons were updated with the proper weapon attack and stat bonuses. Most weapons stayed the same in terms of weapon damage. All weapons got stats added to them as well. I think the starting sword saw a slight decrease in weapon attack, but that's because sword and shield split their stats between the two. Wand users are supposed to have an offhand item called a tome, but that's not in the game yet, and I'm still treating the wand as a two-handed class and putting all the stats on the weapon, so keep an eye out for more offhand options coming in the future for wand classes. Moving on, I have been working with Mao and Netherfang on ideas for armor, but there was a slight problem with the player sprite. The two veteran artists pointed out a key issue with the player sprite. It's flat, specifically in the downward facing perspective. See, all of the world tiles are drawn in what's called the three-fourths perspective, meaning they are drawn as if the camera is viewing them from a downward angle, but the player sprite is flat in all directions as if the camera is facing them head on. So before we get new armor sprites, we gotta fix the player sprite, which we did. Using Penny Pocket as an example, the three of us worked out a new player sprite to fit the corrected perspective. As a bonus to all of this change, the player sprite is now also two pixels taller, which is good, so now there's more room for armor detail. With this change, this player sprite looks like it actually belongs in the world with everything else. And with this new player sprite in hand, they are hard at work at getting our first craftable armor sets drawn up to be added to the game. Aside from all of that, I am working to get more quests added to the mind map here. There will be a quest to kill some of these bats and spiders, and we got this badass spider coming soon, so I'm super excited to get that into the game once it's done. The mine is feeling a little empty in these few areas though, I'm not exactly sure what what sort of monsters I want to put here, so if you have a good idea, let me know down in the comments. And that's it for this week. Don't forget, two weeks from now I will be doing an AMA devlog instead of your regular devlog, uh, so be sure to get your questions into the AMA temp section of the Discord or leave a comment down below. I'm gonna try and answer all of the questions there, within reason. Aside from that, I have actually been starting on the next map. It is the group content oriented map, the Deep Forest, so I'm looking forward to showing you guys the progress on that when I get back. So I gotta get back to work. I'll see you next time. Bye. <laughs>